Hi, my name is Randy Russ with Ashland Industries. The video you're about to watch is a product profile of the Ashland 1410E ejector scraper. 14 cubic yards capacity, 10 foot width of cut machine. Now guys, this is our rear load design. Now what we found with it was customers, in the, particularly in the south areas where they do a little bit of land leveling, but typically they're tied to like a 200 to 350 horsepower tractor this machine really fits some of those wider format scrapers. The 140 that we've had previously in the XL and the TS is basically a scraper that's just over eight foot width of cut. So we widened out the width in this machine and came with a rear load design, which means we're raising over the rear tires of the scraper to control the depth of cut. So let's kind of do a little walk around and show you why this machine's built the way it is. The one thing we did with the scraper is we want to provide you excellent value. And we adapted a modular build system. So what we did is have the side frames basically consist of a left and a right. The floor bolts into the side frame, same thing for the rear section as well as the front section. Everything bolts together to the side frame. This gives us the flexibility to bolt in the four tire carriage as you see it here, the four 17 5 by 25 tires, or you could order up with a two tire, two 20.5 by 25, and simply just all bolts onto the section here. Now at the rear of the machine, we raise and lower the rear tires to control the depth of cut with these two 5x20 cylinders mounted vertically over here to move the carriage back and forth. And what you'll find is basically that's much better than some of the competitors that used to have a cylinder mounted horizontally to retract to raise the tires up. We get the cylinders up and out of the way and not in the debris zone where you're basically having rocks hitting the chrome shaft or knocking fittings off. They're very well protected back here with this lift cylinder. So what we want to do is kind of point out basically in a direct mount scraper of larger capacities, we run a horizontal hitch pin. The idea is we want to move that scraper very close from the tractor, keep your ballasting, keep your transfer into it, but not being hanging way out there. So we have to replace the tractor drawbar with a specialized scraper tractor drawbar. Visit our website, you can find the make and model for your tractors on there. But the yellow hitch assembly system here, we have in shaft hitch pin that runs horizontally into this particular drawbar. If you have a John Deere draw bar with a 60 millimeter pin and a little wider ear spacing, we can switch out this yoke and accommodate that wider ear spacing 60 millimeter pin from John Deere. But this hitch assembly system here has six grease circs. That's the only grease circ you'll find on this machine. Everything else from this point back is greaseless. So coming back from this system here, the other thing we want to try to do is put visibility from the tractor seat into the blade. So coming back with this framework, you see we kind of raise it up, come into the side frame, the idea is we want to be able to see underneath this front section pipe to the blade so you can see exactly what you're doing. Now, the another added protection we did with this hydraulics is basically we ran the hydraulics through the front section pipe, coming down this heavy duty dirt shield here and actually runs through the main frame underneath here and through the tubes of the rear carriage. So there's no hydraulic lines like you've seen in a past model sitting in the front section pipe or hanging off here. The only thing we have basically exposed on this side is the valve control. So we got it very heavily tucked underneath here but otherwise, on both sides of the machine, all the hydraulics run through the framework, giving you good protection in your hydraulic line, especially you get in areas where you're top loading or areas where you got a lot of material debris, like tree branches kind of coming into the area. Now, basically, when I got the scraper into the cut position, as you'll see, it is here. So what you'll have is the rear tires are controlling the depth of cut. So relatively, everything from this point forward is rigid to the tractor draw bar, because this is the only thing that's really moving. And by doing that, it's lowering the whole machine to the ground. Now it's important to understand on a rear load design that you have good clearance underneath here. Because what can happen is if your draw bar hitch height is too high, you have to retract this more to get this thing to a depth of cut. And some draw bars that are too high, you may see a situation where you start to drag your floor before the blade goes to the ground. That's not a very good thing. Now our floor system, we basically designed it to a point where we give you a little more clearance underneath the area, but make sure when you operate in a rear load design that you got good clearance underneath the floor while loading. Now you can see we have the scraper raised up and have the push off fully forward. As the push off comes forward, it actually passes the top side of the blade by several inches, allowing the material to easily come out of the scraper without having to double eject. Now you may wonder what the difference between a two tire carriage versus a four tire carriage means to you. Now the two tire carriage really is designed for a cost reduction. Now despite we went to a taller tire, it's got a little longer rolling radius, it kind of carries up a little bit better than the 17.5 tire in just a rolling characteristics. However, with the two tire system, they also are displaced over two areas. So they have a tendency to pump up more, especially in soft condition, and do a little bit more rutting and pumping. Now the four tires, what you see, the 17.5 is still a very wide tire as compared to a lot of the other scrapers in this class. It does a great job of having good rowing characteristics, but it doesn't see the pumping action. It kind of evenly compacts that whole job site more evenly across the tire width of the machine. So what you'll find with a 17.5 tire versus a 20.5 tire, it's also safer on job sites. So say for instance, you take this scraper, 
and you're stockpiling on top, topsoil, and you get close to the edge with this tire, and it could be dangling over the edge, you got the other three tires kind of keeping the machine flat, level, safely on that stockpile to get off. Now the two tire situation on that same stockpile coming over it, you get that outside tire off that edge and breaks that edge off, there's no middle tires. What happens is the scraper starts to drift over, causing the whole machine to slide off and pulling the scraper and the tractor possibly off that stockpile. So the four tire is a much better way to go. I think it's really a much safer, but I think also the compaction is much better for you. Now, as you can see on the back side of it, we have these two heavy duty wheel standards that are tied together with this pipe, basically controlling the wheels at the back end of the machine that's being moved by the five by 20 cylinder here. Let's talk about the wheel spindles here we have. We have a four and a quarter inch spindle that basically has hubs on both ends, so they're independent of one another. So what you'll find is if you get a debris in front of one tire, all three other tires continue to rotate if that one's starting to skid. Some of the competition, they used to put two wheels on one hub. So if you got debris in front of one tire, both tires skid. So that what happens is the material starts to slough in front of that tire and you get material build up in front of both tires. We don't see that happening as quickly because we have a hub basically in a system on each wheel. Now the push-off system on this 1410 has four rollers that are mounted onto the push-off panel itself. There's two mid-mount rollers that are shoulder rollers to prevent the push-off from going side to side as well as from carrying up. Say for instance, you've got some heavy material building up on the floor. As well as there's two floor rollers mounted right at the bottom to carry the push-off smoothly forward. So when switching the blades, we have a very convenient apron lockup pin that you can basically move from the storage position and put into the sidewall of the apron. Now sometimes customers will use a scraper as a transporty bucket, just like an off-road truck. Now what you can do, we got a tilting headache rack. We got four bolts, you can loosen up the one on a squeeze block so you can move the tilting headache rack back, give you a bigger target to work in. Now also what we have is a cellular design on our sidewalls with this heavy plate wrapped on here to protect the sidewall, see if it's your top and maybe a wad of dirt hits you, you're not gonna bend your sidewalls because I got a very massive support system right here to protect it and top loading. Now this scraper has numerous lifting points. You can lift it onto a truck with an excavator from the top, as well as chain down loops to tie it down properly to the low boy. Another nice convenient feature of the 1410 is a dual viewing window on both sides of the apron so you can see into the scraper while loading. A integrated decal to help you repeat the apron opening. Well, that wraps up our product profile, the 1410 e-ejector scraper from Ashland. If you have any questions, please visit us our website at ashlandind.com or give us a call toll-free 877-634-4622. Thank you.